Reading is a hobby loved by a lot of people. If you're a bookworm, you can probably think about at least two books that you would recommend to anyone who asks. But I want you to think about the most mysterious book you have ever read. You see, while most books were written to tell a story or to inform, there are some in history that seem to have been created solely to intrigue and confuse their readers. Let's take a look at some of the most puzzling and mysterious books ever written. From the cursed book destined to never be published, to a guide to a non-existent world, here are the 15 most mysterious books written in history. Number 15. The Cursed Book Destined to Never Be Published Historia del Huérfano, or The Orphan Story, is a 400-year-old Spanish novel that took centuries to be published. It was written by a monk named Martin de León y Cardenas between 1608 and 1615. He wanted to publish his manuscript as soon as he finished it, and yet he feared that the book would damage the image of the Roman Catholic Church. The premise of the story is quite simple. The novel tells the tale of a 14-year-old who left Spain to seek adventure in the Spanish colonies. There isn't anything sinister about the contents of the book, and yet it's said that the manuscript is cursed. Sometime around the 1620s, the manuscript got lost until it was found again by a Spanish scholar in 1965. Several publishers, big and small, tried to release the manuscript, but none of them were successful. And so some people started saying that the novel was cursed, and it was destined to never be published. A lot of people who worked to publish the book also suffered from ill fates, from a strange disease, a tragic accident, bad luck, and more. In 2017, the book was finally published. It took about 400 years for the novel to be released, and it took hundreds of people over the last centuries to publish it. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to read the novel, just in case the book still has any lingering curses. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. The Cryptic Book That Talks About How to Control the Human Mind The Kabbalion is a compilation of teachings based on the principles explained by the legendary Hellenistic figure, Hermes Trismegistus. Hermes was an ancient sage whose teachings reached far and wide, even when he was still alive. It was said that the ancient Egyptians named him the Scribe of the Gods, and the Greeks hailed him as the God of Wisdom. In some writings, he's the one who discovered alchemy and even astrology. The Kabbalion is a mysterious book that was only published in 1908, and it became the foundation of the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus. Despite being released, it's still considered an anomalous book that's only fully understood by a few. The teachings in this book have never been associated with a specific religious sect, and to this day, it's maintained with a strict secrecy. It was said that the Kabbalion contains information about the foundation of the universe that is still not known by most of humanity. It also explains how one could influence their mind and change it according to their own will. The art of mental alchemy talks about the mastery of mental forces. It's said that once you learn how to control your mind, you can also influence reality. One of the basic tenets of the book is that we live in a mental universe. Everything around you is in your mind. I must say that while most of the book is mysterious, its principles make a lot of sense. One of the hermetic principles indicated in the Kabbalion is the principle of correspondence, which means your thoughts mirror your reality. It also includes the principle of vibration, which means when we resonate an emotion, we will inevitably attract people who will bring more of it. Although a lot of people consider the Kabbalion nothing more than a cryptic and philosophical book, many think of it as a piece of great knowledge. Number 13. Unknown Book Donated to a Library This is the Rohan Codex, and we don't know much about it. The book was first discovered in the 19th century in Hungary, and aside from the fact that it was donated to a library, nothing else is known about it. This 448-page manuscript is written in a mysterious alphabet of nearly 200 symbols and contains strange illustrations, from military battles to religious symbolism. In fact, the title of the book itself is unknown, and it's named after the Hungarian city of Rohank where it was kept. The contents of this book were so confusing that some scholars started to believe that it's just a hoax that dates back to the 18th century. Some find it hard to believe that it's merely a fake, though. After all, who would have the time to finish an almost 500-page book just for the fun of it? Although the exact origin of the book is still unknown, some experts think that it's linked to India, Samaria, or ancient Hungary. We really won't know until we finally crack the code of the book. 
So until then, the debate as to whether this book is real or not will continue. Who knows? You might even be the person who will finally decipher the Codex. Perhaps experts made the copy of the Rohan Codex online in hopes that an internet sleuth can finally decode the entire thing. Number 12. Misplaced Doodles Imagine grabbing a medieval manuscript that contains the decree of the Pope. You'd think that anything written for religious purposes would be treated with utmost respect. That's why a lot of people are puzzled upon seeing the Smithfield Decretals. The contents of this manuscript is nothing out of the ordinary. It contains a copy of the Decretals, or Papal Decree, of Pope Gregory IX. What puzzled a lot of people, however, are the many drawings on the margin of the book's pages that seemingly don't fit the context of the tome. The original manuscripts contain illustrations that depict scenes of Pope Gregory IX and his supporters. It might be odd to see pictures in the manuscript, but it wasn't odd at all. However, most of the margin of the pages remain blank so that future owners of the manuscript can write annotations of their own at the bottom of each page. Unfortunately, the next owners of the tome didn't get the right message. Sometime around 1340, the Smithfield Decretals fell into the hands of a person in Eastern England who ordered for illustrators to draw pictures on the margins of each page. It turned out that there wasn't anything mysterious about the book's strange illustrations. The margins that depict dragons, castles, and other fairy tale-like pictures were drawn by London illustrators, who decided to create satirical figures about the canon law. It's also true that they purposefully drew the designs that don't seem to have any connection with the texts. Number 11. The Poem That Kills Tomino's Hell is a Japanese poem released in 1919 in a poetry collection titled Sekin. There isn't much mystery surrounding its contents, but many people believe that this piece of literary art is actually cursed. Rumor has it that if you try and read this poem out loud, you will die or suffer eternal damnation in hell. Tomino's Hell was the work of a popular Japanese poet named Saijo Yaso. He used to write nursery rhymes and popular song lyrics yet his most renowned piece is said to be cursed. Saijo allegedly created the poem when he was 27 years old in 1919. The piece tells of the journey of a young boy named Tomino to the lowest levels of Buddhist hell. Even without the curse associated with it, several lines in the poem are enough to scare anyone. A part of the translated poem reads, Down past the seven mountains and seven rivers of hell, the solitary journey of sweet little Tomino. If in this hell they are found, May they then come to me. Just like other urban legends, the mystery surrounding this poem started off with hearsay. Some posts online talk about a young boy getting hit by a truck on his way home after performing the poem in front of the class. Some claim that a girl suddenly passed away because of an unknown sickness after reading it out loud. Some claim that a high school student suddenly disappeared after reading the poem due to a dare. Some of these incidents might have been coincidental, but the deaths linked to this poem are enough for people to be wary of it. Is it just the law of attraction? Or could it be that this poem is actually cursed? The entire translation of the poem is making rounds on the internet. You can try to read it aloud, if you dare. Number 10. Popol Vuh Literally the book of the people, the Popol Vuh is known as a manuscript that explains how the world was created. It was said to have been written by the Mayas, and it vividly describes how the gods brought life upon earth, and how they created humans out of wood and clay to praise them. It also talks about the religion, legends, custom, and history of the civilization of Mesoamerica. To this day, there isn't much known about this book. Even its origin is questioned by experts. You see, the book wasn't discovered by an archaeologist in a Maya temple, but instead, it was given to a Dominican priest in 1701 by a parishioner in a small town in Guatemala. Many people doubt that the book was handed to the priest voluntarily by the townsfolk, especially because it contains a lot of important information. For many, the book is a closely guarded secret that shouldn't have been revealed to outsiders. Number 9. The Voynich Manuscript A lot of experts often give the title of the most mysterious book in the world to this small unassuming manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript is a 246-page book made of vellum. It contains a lot of confusing symbols and detailed illustrations, from castles, dragons, and plants, to astronomical symbols, among other things. For years, it's been stored at the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University, where it's been repeatedly examined by experts to try and decode what the book is talking about. No one has ever been successful. 
But there are some theories as to what it's about. The most accepted theory states that the Voynich Manuscript talks about medical practices, specifically about women's health. It might take us a while to fully decode the language in which this book is written, but hopefully we'll know about the contents of this intriguing book in the near future. Number 8. The Book That Holds the Future Nostradamus was a French apothecary, but he's most known as a prophet who could see the future. However, he was more than a person who spoke about the future. In the 14th century, when Europe was hit with plague, Nostradamus practiced hygiene and fought for the removal of corpses from city streets. This was a stark difference from the practices at the time, which included using potions made of harmful mercury, improper bloodletting, and dressing patients with clothes soaked in garlic. Moreover, Nostradamus created an herbal lozenge made out of rosehip, which is rich in vitamin C, which helped aid people suffering from the plague. This achievement on its own is enough to make Nostradamus well-known during his time, but it was said that at some point, he had an awakening. The renowned prophet accurately predicted the future pope, who came to be known as Sixtus V. He also once advised King Henry to avoid ceremonial jousting, and just as he predicted, three years later, the king died in a jousting match. A lot of people doubted Nostradamus, with some thinking he's nothing but an insane scholar, but many also believed him. In fact, some people today still believe that his work, titled The Prophecies, is accurate. He accurately predicted the Great Fire in London, the French Revolution, Napoleon's conquest, and even the discoveries of Louis Pasteur. It also seemed like Nostradamus saw that Hitler would soon lead an army that claimed the lives of millions of innocent people. If you're still not impressed, he also predicted the atomic bomb and the assassination of JFK. Some people continue to read the works of Nostradamus just to see if any more of it will come true. Number 7. The Greek Magical Papyri The Greek Magical Papyri is a small portion of papyri that contains text and illustrations linked to the ancient Greek. It was said to contain magical spells, hymns, and rituals that all date from the 100s BC to the 400s BC. To this day, no one knows how to interpret it, and much of the rituals and practices in the book are still shrouded in mystery. Number 6. The Book of Abramelin If you're into horror movies, you've most likely already heard about the Book of Abramelin, or the Book of the Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage. This manuscript is said to date back to the 14th or 15th century, but it only became popular in the 19th and 20th centuries. The book is similar to an epistolary novel that tells the tale of Abraham of Worms. Throughout his story, several magical practices and rituals are revealed. For this reason, this book is well known in modern occultism. It's said to contain instructions on how to summon angels and demons. What's more, it can also teach you some pretty unnecessary spells, like how to turn someone into a mare or how to convince a spirit to bring you dairy. I guess I can see why some people think this book is cursed. Number 5. The Book That Kills The Book of Soiga or Alderia is one of the most mysterious books in the world and remains undeciphered to this day. A lot of historians, occultists, and cryptologists have tried their hand at deciphering the book, but all of them were stumped. The Book of Soiga has 197 pages in total, and the last several pages contain 36 tables. Each one has 36 rows and 36 columns of letters, with a total of 46,656 letters. You can imagine how hard it is to decipher this manuscript. Some people claim that the book was written in the language that Adam heard when he spoke to God. In short, this book was written in a language that God himself uttered. That's why some people think that only the Archangel Michael can decipher this tome. However, in 1998, mathematician Jim Reeds deciphered several of the tables, and it turned out that the book contained incantations and the names of demons and angels alike. It was said that the book was cursed and is associated with death but there are some claims that this is just a hoax. Number 4. The Book Created by the Devil Himself The Codex Gigas, or literally the giant book, is a 310-page manuscript that is a massive 3 feet in size. It originally contained about 320 pages, but as years passed by, the last 10 pages were cut and removed from the book. Now just imagine how heavy this book is. After all, the vellum used for the pages of this book is made from 160 donkeys. It's also known as the Devil's Bible, and it isn't only known for being massive, but also for being the manuscript created by the Devil himself. In fact, 
The Codex even contains a portrait of the Dark Lord. Much about this book is shrouded in mystery, and even its origin is debated by experts. It's believed that this book was created sometime in the 13th century in a chamber of a monastery in the Czech Republic. The story goes that a monk in the monastery broke his vows, and to repay for his sins, he was punished to be walled up alive. He begged for his life and claimed that he would do anything to be given a second chance. And so, the elders in the monastery said that they would free him if he managed to finish the book in a single night. Everyone knew that the monk's fate was sealed. However, the desperate monk asked for the help of the devil to finish the book, and in exchange, he gave away his soul. Many believe that this is nothing more than a legend, and yet, it appears that there's some truth to it. You see, everything within the book seemed to have been written by a single person, and analysis of the writing suggests that he did it consistently, almost in one sitting. This is an impossible feat, because even if a scribe worked for six hours a day, six days a week, it would still take him about five years to complete the entire book. Aside from the tome's origin, its contents are also the subject of curiosity for many people. In addition to the horrifying photo of the devil, the Codex Gigas also contains the Christian Bible in its entirety, the Jewish war, as well as some medical practices and types of exorcisms. Number 3. Instructions to Summon the Devil's Right-Hand Man The Grand Grimoire was seen as a handbook of black magic from the 17th to the 18th century. It allegedly contained detailed instructions on how to summon the close aid of the devil, Lucifuge Rolfokal. Because of its close association with the devil, a lot of people think that it's cursed. In the end, however, the book's grim contents made it skyrocket in popularity across Europe, especially in France during the 19th century. Some people still feared this book and didn't buy it, despite its fame. Number 2. The Book That Brings Bad Luck At first glance, you would think that this book is nothing out of the ordinary. With its beautiful cover adorned with gold, it's incredibly mesmerizing to look at. A lot of people would advise you not to do so, though. After all, this book allegedly brings bad luck. This book, titled The Great Omar, is a custom-made edition of a collection of the pieces of 11th century poet Omar Khayyam. This book was the creation of renowned bookbinder Francis Sengorsky. He labored over the creation of this book for years before he was satisfied with it. To get the details correct, he borrowed a human skull for reference. After that, he also asked a zookeeper to feed a live rat to a snake to capture the exact way the reptile angled its jaws. What's more, he used 100 square feet of gold leaf, 5,000 pieces of leather, and 1,000 pieces of precious gemstones such as rubies and emeralds to complete it. With how intricately the book was bound, it was only expected that it would be priced quite handsomely. The price tag of the book ended up at around 1,000 pounds, or about $150,000 today. I love books, but I don't think I'd ever spend that much on a single one. Unsurprisingly, Sengorsky had a hard time selling the book, until he finally sold it at an auction for less than half of its original asking price. Selling it also became the catalyst of the book's association with bad luck. Several weeks after the book was sold, Sengorsky drowned and died at the age of 37. Coincidentally, or should I say ironically, the book was also drowned because its owner was one of the passengers of the doomed ship Titanic. The contents of the book were never recovered from the wreck, but in the 1930s, it was recreated once again. In an unlucky twist of fate, just when bookbinder Stanley Bray finished the book, the Second World War began. He tried to protect his creation by putting it inside a vault, but it seemed fate was set to destroy the tome. A bomb ended up falling on the vault, and while the actual container survived, the book inside melted because of the high temperature. But perhaps the third time is the charm, because the third edition of The Great Omar is safely housed in the British Library to this day. However, some people still believe that the trio of peacocks on the cover brings a bad omen to anyone associated with the book. Number 1. Guide to a World That Doesn't Exist Imagine that somewhere out there, someone wrote a book with 360 pages filled with information about a world that doesn't exist. It's filled with strange and rather macabre illustrations. It contains unexplainable illustrations, including that of a tree that can walk, tiny feet with umbrellas, and more. There is even a photo of a creature that looks like the unholy offspring of a horse and a worm. This is Codex Seraphinianus. 
Initially, people thought it was some sort of medieval manuscript written in a language that is yet to be deciphered. And for years, the book puzzled a lot of experts. As it turned out, the Codex Seraphinianus is actually meaningless. Yes, you heard that right. A lot of people tried to decipher the book, only for them to be more frustrated when the author revealed that the entire tome is actually a semic. Essentially, the writings you see here may look like symbols, but they don't mean anything at all. This book was created by Italian artist, designer, and architect Luigi Serafini, and it's an imaginary encyclopedia of an imaginary world. To make people believe that it actually means something, Codex Serafinianus was written in a way similar to scientific encyclopedias. Despite the fact that the letters here don't mean anything, the illustrations are incredibly interesting, and I think they're worth looking at. Now, I'll give you a plot twist. If someone from our time thought about writing a book like this, perhaps all the undeciphered books we've talked about previously were created with the same idea? What if all these seemingly mysterious books were written specifically to confuse us? These books are pretty interesting, and I'd love to read them, but I'll pass on the cursed manuscripts. I don't really want to suffer from eternal damnation or untimely death. If you're one of the brave souls who have read any of the books I mentioned in this video, share your thoughts and opinions about them in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.